Well, our word for today is desperate. How many of you have either ever been desperate or know somebody who was? All right. I don't think we have to think very hard to come up with a time and a place where we were desperate for something or someone. One of the meanings of the word desperate is this. It means having a great need or desire for something. Some of you are desperate for sleep right now. You have a great need and a great desire. One of the things that we realize though is that when someone's desperate, they usually act different. And they do things they wouldn't normally do. Have you ever been there where you were desperate and you did something that you would normally not do but you were desperate? When people are desperate, they don't usually worry about what other people think or say. You don't really care when you're desperate, do you? Sometimes when it comes to saying whenever to God, we tend to put a little asterisk next to it. How many of you are familiar with asterisks and what they do, all right? If you've ever watched a TV commercial, and I promise you all these little things, and there's a little asterisk and a little bit of fine print that you absolutely cannot read. And what's it doing? It's putting a restriction on that offer. When there's an asterisk there, it means, yes, I'm saying this, but there's a little more to the story. Go down to the bottom of the page and read the rest of it. And I think a lot of times our whenever looks more like this than not. I think many times we're just like this guy. We, we believe Jesus. We acknowledge Jesus. We say that he's worthy, but he's just not quite as worthy as what we have going on at the time. We say, God, following you, th that really makes sense. I, I recognize who you are. I believe the right things about you. But now's not a great time. I've got, you know, I'm young. I want to experience the things in high school that everyone else is doing. God, now's not a great time, but later will be a better time. And as a pastor, I've watched this happen so many times. People say, later I will follow God. You know, I'm in high school right now, but when I'm in college, I'll get serious about my walk with God. You know, when they're in college, they're like, no, college is great. You know, when I get married, I'll get serious about my relationship with God. They get married and they say, you know, when we have kids, we'll get serious about a relationship with God. This man said, let me first go and bury my father, verse 59. Seems legitimate. Back up there. It seems legitimate, but it really isn't. Because what he was saying is there are things in my life that are more important than you. There are things in my life that are more important than you. And I think we often convince ourselves that things are okay with our relationship with God because we have good intentions of following him later. I think it's really easy to feel conviction about God calling you to do something or to live a certain way and saying, you know what, I, I agree with that and I'm going to do that later. Later on is when I'll live that way. But God is looking for followers who will say wherever, whenever, and thirdly, a word that I know all of you have used, whatever. <laughs> How many of you have ever told your parents this? <laughs> Anybody willing to raise your hands? The video camera is not on you so you're safe. I promise I won't tell. All right, a few of you admitted to saying this to your parents. How many of you are too scared to say that to your parents, but you were thinking it while they were telling you something? All right. <laughs> Even more hands. And again, you're safe from the camera. Whatever is a word that we can use to convey apathy, but it really means a lack of restriction of anything or any amount. And so when we say whatever... We're saying no restrictions in anything or any amount. Let's look at the third man that Jesus mentions. Verse 61. Another said, yes, I will follow you, but first. Now, I don't know if he was standing around when the previous conversation went on or not, but you think maybe he would have got something because he's doing the same thing. He addresses Jesus properly, calls him Lord. He says, I will follow you, but he does the but first thing. But first. But first there's something more important. Let me say goodbye to my family. Now again, this seems like maybe a reasonable request, but we're going to dive into what he was actually asking. Verse 62, Jesus says, Anyone who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. You see, this guy believed the right things about Jesus, but that's never enough. 
One of the greatest tragedies that you could ever, ever incur in life is to believe the right things about Jesus, but never know him and never choose to follow him. And that happened to many, many people. This guy wanted to say goodbye to his family. Well, you think, well, he's going to run home and you know, grab his bag and say goodbye. Wrong. In this culture, saying goodbye was a formal process that could last weeks. There was lots of parties. There were lots of gatherings. And he was basically saying, I want to make sure that, um, that I have lots of goodbyes and it's all about me. And Jesus says, anyone who looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. He was distracted. I... I remember growing up, uh, my grandfather was a farmer in New Jersey. For those of you that are not from New Jersey and you think that all of New Jersey is paved over, that's not entirely true. And one of the things that I liked about growing up on the farm was riding on tractors. And occasionally, they would let me drive one of the tractors. Now, that was kind of a scary proposition. But I had a tendency, I loved to look back. Because I loved to see the mark that the tire was making in the dirt. I was fascinated by that and a little bit ADD. So, <laughs> and unmedicated. <laughs> and so I remember one day, and, and I was driving, and I was sitting on my grandfather's lap, and, and I was looking back, and all of a sudden I realized that we were no longer on the road, but in the middle of the field. <laughs> and what happens when we look back is we don't have our eyes on where we're going, we get distracted. And when we're not willing to say wherever, whenever, and whatever to God, ultimately what we're doing is we're looking back at the things of this life, at stuff, at our comforts, at our habits, at our sin. And we're saying, I have more affection for that than I do for God. I have more desire for those things than I do for Him. And Jesus says, if you're going to be my follower, I must be your greatest desire and your greatest need. I want you to be desperate for me. I want you to know how desperate you are. You see, all of us are really desperate. It's just whether we realize it or not. God is your greatest need and he desires that you would be his greatest desire. He's not willing to share his affection. When I made a decision and my wife and I made a decision to start dating exclusively, I would not have been okay with her if she said, hey, tonight I'm going to go out with somebody else. I was like, wait, wait a minute. We, 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 we said we were only going to date each other. We're, we, we're, we're wanting to get married. I wouldn't have accepted that. Now that I'm married, I certainly wouldn't accept my wife coming to me and say, hey, honey, I'm going out on a date tonight. But don't worry. I love you and, and I'll be back. Now, that's crazy, right? I mean, we, you laugh, all right? That sounds silly. But I think sometimes that's how we would treat our relationship with Christ. God, I love you. I'm not really leaving you. But there's some other things right now that are more important than you. But I'll be back. And God doesn't call us to treat our relationship with him. He wants us to follow him without restriction. Without holding back. Wherever, whenever, whatever. D.L. Moody, the great evangelist of the 19th century, was challenged as a young man with these words. Someone came to him one day and they said, the world is yet to see what God will do with, for, and through, and in, and by the man who is fully consecrated to him. And that, that quote, it grabbed his attention. And D.L. Moody writes that, when he heard that quote, when he heard that said, he thought, he said, a man. He didn't say a great man. He, he didn't say an educated man. He didn't say a smart man. He didn't say anything other than a man. And D.L. Moody said, I will try my utmost to be that man. You see, you have a great calling on your life. And there is no limit to what God can do in you and through you to make an impact for his kingdom in this world if you will say, God, I'll follow you wherever, whenever, whatever. Our world is in desperate need of the gospel. Billions of people have never even heard of the name of Jesus. Billions others have heard but have rejected him. Our world needs Christ. 
Everyone spends eternity somewhere. And that decision is determined by what they do with Jesus. The world needs to hear, and God's looking for young men and young women who will say, God, you can have my life. And I want you to know that there's nothing greater, nothing better than you could do if you're a follower of Christ than to come to that place where you see God for who he is. And say, God, I see how great you are, how holy, how perfect you are. I see how loving and kind and gracious you are, that you gave your son for me and you purchased my forgiveness. And God, because of that, I want to offer my life freely and willingly to you. And God, I want to say wherever, whenever, whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do it. Paul said, as a prisoner of the Lord, I beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. I want to ask you this. What's holding you back? Just be real honest this morning, not thinking about anybody else, but just thinking about your life, whether you're a student, counselor, faculty. What is the one thing that's holding you back? What's the one thing that you're clinging on that's keeping you from saying to God, wherever, whenever, whatever? And I think the heart of that one thing is your desperation. Do you really see God as your greatest need and your greatest desire? Are you desperate for God? Because when you're desperate for God, you'll realize that He is worthy of you telling Him, God, I'll follow you without restrictions. Will you be that person that God uses greatly simply because you are willing to say wherever Whenever, whatever, will you follow God without restrictions? God can use you. God wants to use you. He saved you for a great purpose. He calls you to see that and to respond. Let me pray for you this morning. Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. and Father, we stand amazed at your greatness, at your power, at your glory, at your splendor. Lord, certainly you are far greater than we could ever know or understand or imagine. And Father, I just pray that this morning you would help us to pause and to see your greatness, to see your worthiness. Father, I pray you'd also help us to realize the depth of your love. And Lord, I realize that your love is deeper and wider and higher. It's further than we can ever grasp. But I pray that we would go further in our understanding and go deeper in our realization of how greatly you love us. And God, I, I pray that seeing you for who you are and seeing our lives the way you see them would cause us to realize that you are worthy of everything that we are and everything that we have. And God, I pray for each person that's here this morning. Lord, you know exactly where they're at in their journey with you. Father, you know the need of their heart. And God, I pray today that you would help them to deal with their life.